Hey guys, it's Tim, and this is HN Annotated. As we gear up to see Godzilla and King Kong throw down yet again in 2020 as part of the MonsterVerse, it's important to remember the version of Kong that first faced off with the King of the Monsters. King Kong, of course, first showed up in his self-titled 1933 black and white classic by RKO, and is probably the most well-known American-made giant monster. So naturally, if an East meets West monster mass was going to happen, logically he'd be the first choice of monsters to go up against Japan's Godzilla. The issue there is that King Kong in the original film is only about 50 feet tall and weighed 5 tons, which is quite large for a gorilla, sure, but nothing compared to Godzilla's 50 meters of height and 2,000 metric ton weight. So if the two were going to have a fight of any kind, King Kong was going to have to be brought to Godzilla's level. This is the version of the character we're going to focus on today. This all began in 1962 when RKO licensed out the character to Toho to produce the Godzilla and King Kong crossover. In the film, King Kong is a native of Faro Island, rather than Skull Island, where he was discovered by the expedition team that was sent there by Pacific Pharmaceuticals in order to find the legendary creature that the natives worshipped. They eventually saw Kong when he fought against the giant octopus. After this, he drank some jugs of juice created from a special berry known as the Soma that the natives prepared for him while they chanted, which caused Kong to fall asleep. The team took advantage of this and tied Kong to a raft and sailed back to Tokyo. However, they were stopped by the Coast Guard who informed them that the man who sent them on their expedition, Mr. Tako, would be liable for any damage that Kong caused while in Tokyo. And this is when Kong began to wake up. In rage, Kong began to rampage across the coastline until he found Godzilla in the wilderness. Kong threw a boulder at him, which is what initiated the fight. Godzilla handily won the first round with an atomic blast. Kong later returned to Tokyo, where he easily broke down an electric barrier that was used to block Godzilla before. In fact, the electricity seemed to make him stronger for some reason. Kong proceeded to rampage through the city until he ended up climbing the National Diet Building. The Japan Self-Defense Force responded to this by shooting him with rockets filled with soma berry juice and recordings of the Faroe Island natives chanting, in the hopes that it would put him to sleep again. When this works, they decided to use Kong to fight Godzilla at Mount Fuji in the hopes that the two would destroy one another. After tying Kong to several balloons, they dropped him on Godzilla's location and the two began to fight again. Godzilla again held the advantage, beating Kong unconscious, but a fluke thunderstorm hit Kong with lightning, which again repowered him for some reason. Back in the fight, Kong fared much better this time around, with his grabs doing some additional electric damage. The fight ends with the two falling over a cliff and only Kong emerging, beginning to swim back to his home at Faro Island. There was a rumor surrounding the film for a while that there were actually two endings, one where Kong won for American audiences, and one where Godzilla won for Japan, so that each would have their monster win. However, this ended up not being true, and the ending where Kong emerges is the only one that exists. So this means Kong won, right? Well, no, actually. Like with Freddy vs. Jason, the fight is actually a draw, according to producer Tomoyuki Tanaka. So I guess Godzilla just chilled underwater for a bit and then went home too. But what else ever happened to Kong, God of Thunder? Well, he does have one other Toho film appearance, but before we get to that, we have to talk about the 1966 animated show, The King Kong Show, which was produced by Rankin Bath and Toei Animation. After the series was a success, Rankin Bath went to Toho to do another King Kong film, featuring elements from the show. This included Kong's new home of Mondo Island, the evil Makani Kong, and the human villain Doctor Who. So yes, King Kong has fought both Godzilla and Doctor Who. The resulting film was called King Kong Escapes. In the film, Kong is discovered on Mondo Island by a joint expedition of American and Japanese scientists. When one of the scientists is attacked by Gorosaurus, Kong intervenes and defeats it. When the expedition was leaving the island, they're attacked by a giant sea snake, which Kong swam out to defeat as well to give them safe passage. When news of Kong reached Doctor Who, he captured Kong and mind-controlled him to mine for a radioactive element called Element X so that he could sell it. Some of the members of the expedition free Kong, which angers Who, causing him to release Kong's evil robotic duplicate, Makani Kong. Makani Kong tracks down the original to Tokyo, which leads to a fight on top of Tokyo Tower. 
but Candy Kong is knocked off and destroyed upon hitting the ground. Kong then attacks Hu's submarine, killing him before returning back to Mondo Island. There were plans for another Toho Kong film the year before Escapes, which would have been titled Operation Robinson Crusoe, King Kong vs. Ebira. As the title suggests, it would have featured Kong fighting against Ebira, a giant lobster kaiju, but the film was scrapped in favor of having Godzilla in Kong's role and retitled the film Ebira, Horror of the Deep. Toho would lose the license of King Kong shortly after this, so Kong and Godzilla wouldn't officially meet up again until their upcoming matchup in 2020. And that's the history of Toho's Kong that helped inspire the version we see today. So let us know your thoughts down in the comments on all of this, and until next time, this has been Tim for HN Annotated.